Uh, hey guys. So as of about 3 a.m. last night when I fixed my last bug, uh, the FPGA AGC, and by extension the real AGC, uh, is now capable of landing in NASSP uh, entirely via connection through the monitor. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and fire up my testing scenario here to demonstrate. Hopefully this loads correctly. Uh, yeah, looks good. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start up P63. Uh, so this was easier in a lot of ways than I was expecting it to be, and uh, some things were a lot harder than I was expecting them to be. Uh, so as I go through the landing here, I'm going to talk about each of the interfaces that I had to implement and uh, how I did it. You know, if we want to step back interface by interface, uh, how hard it would be to go through the proper, uh, the proper, you know, main connector channel. Uh, great. So we're three minutes away from ignition. Uh, can go ahead and proceed. No final line. Auto maneuver. Okay, and so uh, I'm going to push in the breaker for landing radar, and let's propagate state to TIG minus 30. All right, so first thing uh, that I set up, obviously, is the disk key here. Uh, the keyboard, uh, except for the pro key, operate in exactly the same way that uh, the monitor control panel works. Uh, it's using that same interface I made. Uh, so we're not going in through input channel 15 uh, because still uh, not a decent way to inject interrupts uh, apart from you know what, what I did with the monitor disk panel. Uh, output channels um, are pretty straightforward. Uh, the monitor always captures all of the output channels for the ABC whatever the ATC writes to a channel and monitor caches that, uh, it can report it over USB to NASSP here. Uh, so that's how the display is working. Um, oh, uh, hold on. Before, before I go further, uh, I believe that my rad mode's uh, flag word is bad. Yeah, OK. So let me load that. Uh, just to be sure. Okay. Yeah, so uh, Luminary 99 is not uh, very good. It's quite buggy when it comes to the rad modes uh, flag word. And because during scenario loading, uh, I have to restart, the hardware restart the AGC. Um, the flag word gets kind of set back to the wrong state because the restart protection on it isn't perfect. Uh, so I had to set it there to make sure that uh, we get to the right value. OK, so average G is starting. I'm going to go ahead and arm the descent engine. There's the landing radar kicking on. Uh, we're flying heads down right now more on that later, uh, but the radar is facing off in space, which is why we have the out light. We're not low enough for it anyways at the moment. And there's Allage, so proceed to confirm ignition. And then we should see our command and thrust go up to 10%. Yep, okay, so throttle's 10%, and at uh, ignition plus 26 seconds, we should uh, go up to 97%. Uh, yeah, so as I was saying, uh, output channels, very easy. I just pass along the output channels directly to NASSP, and uh, it handles everything from there. Uh, the disk key code you know, just processes output channel 10. Here's throttle up on time. Perfect. Uh, OK, we're still holding our, out our attitude. Uh, this is output channels 5 and 6 for uh, RCS thrusters doing this. Uh, so disk key was first thing. Uh, scenario loading was also 
fairly easy. Um, and the SSP, uh, when it loads a scenario, it just walks through a list of all the erasables, and uh, I just, you know, use the monitor memory poke function for each line of erasable to uh, set up the ADC in the right state. Uh, same thing for output channels. I can set via the monitor uh, output channels so I can get those into the expected states for any SSP. Uh, and at the end of that, I inject a harder restart so we come up fresh. Um, yeah, so output channels, uh, quite easy. Uh, input channels, not quite so easy. Um, uh, interesting that the, uh, the tape meters aren't working here. Not sure why. Uh, hopefully when the AGC takes over here in a little bit, they'll start working again. Uh, yeah, input channels. So channels 30 through 33 are inverted by default in the AGC. Uh, so they're normally one, and then if you set a switch, they become zero. Uh, which is really annoying because the monitor can only inject ones on the right bus, not zero. Uh, and so, actually getting any SSP channel inputs in uh, ended up being the hardest thing with the most bugs. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to AGC control of the tape meters. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, not sure why that wasn't working uh, on your left control. Uh, so, uh, yeah, input channels. So what I ended up doing is detecting when the AGC is loading an instruction that accesses channels 30 through 33. Uh, and if I detect that such an instruction is being loaded, then I assert bit 5? bit 6. I assert bit 6, um, and that changes an I.O. instruction against channels 30 through 33 to an I.O. instruction against channels 70 through 73, which don't exist in the AGC, and so the AGC won't respond to them, so the right bus will be totally silent. And then I inject the values that I want for uh, the channels 30 through 33. Uh, so I'm, I'm redirecting the AGC to channels that don't exist, and then having the monitor supply the NASSP values for uh, 30 through 33. Uh, so we are at uh, tick plus 3 minutes 30 seconds right now. Uh, in the real Apollo 11 mission, the LEM, <laughs> they do a yaw maneuver uh, to face uh, up. We're still facing down at the moon. Uh, there's nothing I can do about that right now because I haven't implemented the hand controller. I can press the keys and they do nothing. Uh, so we're going to be flying heads down up until 30,000 feet uh, when the LEM is going to get very annoyed at us for having stayed heads down so long and uh, roll us over, uh, roll us over uh, to face heads up. But uh, that's not going to happen until the, uh, like 5 minutes, 45 seconds or so. Uh, which is quite a bit later than uh, the landing radar updates should be incorporated. Um, uh, so we, we have quite a large altitude error in this scenario. Uh, we're 3,000 or so feet lower than expected, and so the late radar updates means that the LEM is going to suddenly realize we're really late in the braking burn, we're 3,000 feet lower than we thought we were. Uh, and it's going to do some gymnastics to get us back. Um, and the whole thing is quite dramatic, uh, kind of fun. That's why I'm flying heads down. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, that was input channels. Uh, let's see, five minutes. I'm going to go ahead and pull up now 68. So our radar returns because our radar is pointing off into space, our positive maximum. And uh, when the LEM rolls us over, we'll start getting a reading there. I'll have to incorporate the, the measurements as quickly as I can. Uh, so next up is uh, CDUs, things like that. Um, the CDU inputs, the, the input counters there, ended up being very easy to implement because NASSP doesn't use pulses for the CDUs. Uh, it kind of cheats and just writes, oh, here we go, here's our maneuver. Okay, 
facing up. So I'm going to start looking at the display here, and as soon as I get a reading, I'm going to do verb 57 to allow. Okay, verb 57, enter, okay. Uh, pull up 68 again. So the delta H reading at the bottom here is starting to go down as the readings converge. Hopefully that was early enough. <coughs> um, so yeah. NASSP writes CDU values, uh, it calculates the value, the expected value of the counter, and then just, when running with virtual AGC, injects that value directly into the counter and erase the location. Um, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't simulate pulses. Uh, and so that was really, really easy to get working with the monitor, because again, I can just write directly to the counters uh, using the monitor. I take the, the numbers calculated by NASSP, and uh, we just had an early throttle down. This should have come at 7 minutes, 25 seconds, but uh, this is like in line with what I've been seeing uh, during the landing. So not, not unexpected. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, numbers look reasonable, though. <laughs> uh, kill that display. So, um, I see you use very easy. Uh, PIP is not, not quite so easy. NASSP does simulate counts for that, and uh, the servicer zeroes the PIP counters once every two seconds. And so you need to add counts as they're generated and not uh, double count things if the, server has, the servicer has zeroed the, the PIPAs. Uh, and so how that one works is the monitor is constantly keeping track of the last value written to uh, the PIPA registers. And as NASSP generates counts, I send the number of counts desired over to the monitor, uh, which then uses a ones complement adder to add that on to what uh, the current value in the ADC is, and then does a right cycle. Oh, here's P64. Okay, so we're pitching down. That's uh, rendezvous radar, not a big deal. Uh, okay, so our uh, target landing site is coming onto screen here. Looks like we're going to survive this one. Um, so, uh, yeah, Pippa's, Pippa's it, it has a counter or, or an adder in the monitor that uh, incorporates pulses from NASSP. Uh, let's see, landing radar. Uh, that worked pretty easily. Uh, landing radar cycles are about 100 milliseconds, uh, and so there is enough time between when the uh, AGC starts a radar cycle uh, for NASSP to pick that up, uh, pick out a value. Uh, to send in and uh, deliver that to the runrad erasable location where the counter uh, shifts data into. There aren't any shift instructions happening because there's no pulses on any of my input pins. Uh, let's see, 41 degrees, so our landing site's going to be right about here. Um, so that, that ended up working out very nicely. Uh, that was nice and easy. Uh, thrust and the tape meters here, uh, they operate in the same sort of fashion and were somewhat difficult. Uh, the AGC picks out uh, it, it writes numbers uh, to the counters, the output counters, and then sets an output channel bit uh, to start counting or shifting uh, the values out. Um, and it uses the channel for other things, uh, which can count as duplicate uh, duplicate sending outs of, of the data if you're not careful. Um, so what it does, what the monitor does is when the AGC writes to either of those counters outside of a count cycle, it latches that value and then the very next time, only the next time, that a 1 is written to the appropriate shift out bit, uh, then it will report that value to NASSP. Um, and 
Yeah, I think that's pretty much everything needed for a landing. So we're coming in. Uh, we are now just over our landing site here. We're about to switch into P-65. And there we are. Okay. Now we're just coming in for a soft landing. Uh, so I've, I've obviously just been letting the ATC fly this entire thing. You know, very little inputs for me other than uh, arming the engine. So uh, the whole thing is working really well. It's controlling its its altitude well. It's controlling its trajectory well. Uh, it's it's working a lot better than I expected, and it's more reliable than I expected. If I don't screw up, uh, you know how late. Oh, picking up dust. And contact light. Uh, oops. Okay, so s stop the engine. Uh, I'm gonna switch pings off and program 68 for landing confirmation. Uh, yeah, so if I don't if I don't screw up how late I incorporate the radar measurements, flying uh, heads down, then the landing works pretty well every time. Uh, yeah, like I said, much much better than I expected, much more reliable than I expected. <laughs> it's pretty awesome to see it working. Okay, and uh, here's our uh, Noun 43. This is our latitude and longitude of our landing site. We've just kind of gotten here. Uh, yeah, so since everything works through the monitor, all the little individual pieces, we can pull things back uh, interface by interface and uh, get them working through more proper uh, counts or discrete pins and, and all of that. Uh, you know, the, the input channels are, are probably somewhat low-hanging fruit uh, to just get switches and things wired in. Uh, the PIPAs with Mark's uh, PIPA simulator uh, will be pretty easy to do, I think. Uh, the CDUs will be a little bit more challenging because, again, NASSB kind of cheats there, so we're going to have to come up with uh, our own delta pulses to send it to the AGC to get the right counts and everything. Uh, and uh, all of these things... Going over USB is um, going to be faster, probably, getting this, the data in to the AGC and back out um, than going through the counts, uh, because the counts as we calculate them are going to be, you know, the number that should have gone into the AGC at that point. And then you have to spend the time to actually send them in count by count, uh, which is going to slow things down. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what sort of effect that has on the uh, control authority, uh, the, the, you know, the quality of the control of uh, the AGC. It does seem, I think, like just the delay that I have from getting data into the ADC and out through the monitor uh, makes the control just a little bit sloppier than we see with the virtual AGC. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully it'll all work out. Uh, so yeah, that's that's that. I was a landing controlled by FPGA. Oh yeah, and uh, I guess just sort of as proof, I can unplug my FPGA ADC. And restart light goes on. Yeah, stops working. Yeah, if I plug it back in, we get a fresh start. Um, all of my memory's been zeroed. So, yeah, it's not happy about anything. So, yeah, that was that.